Welcome to 2021. The quarantine continues. If you're like me, you spent a lot of 2020 binge watching a lot of your favorite shows and spending a lot more time in the kitchen because, well, your favorite restaurants were closed. And during that binge watch, I decided to rewatch one of my favorite shows, The Sopranos. And since I've been spending more time in the kitchen, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna kind of pull a Julia Julia thing and I'm gonna cook through the F Soprano family cookbook. Although I guess in this scenario, instead of Julia and Julia, it's more like Tony and Tony, but whatever. So something I decided would be kind of fun is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cook through the whole show. Not just the recipes that are either in the Soprano family cookbook or entertaining with the Sopranos. Um, so there's going to be some dishes that are not Italian, but thankfully the very first dish that's mentioned six minutes into the show is a great Italian dessert by the name of Sfogliadelle. Girls, mm -hmm. you want some of last night's Sfogliadelle? Mm, get out of here with that fat. One bite. Loosely translated, lobster tail. Funny enough, it's actually the very last recipe in the book but hey Neapolitan style life short it could end tomorrow could end today so you might as well have desserts first right well as you can see the kitchen in my apartment it's not really great to be hosting a kitchen show so I'm gonna actually head over to my parents and I'm gonna use their super awesome kitchen instead but you're welcome to join me uh, I'm not a professional chef I'm just having fun with this. It's kind of a, view, a video blog of my uh, experiences going through all these recipes. Some of them for my first time. Actually, a lot of them for my first time. But I hope you'll come along and if you learn some cool stuff and I hope I motivate you to do some of your own in-home cooking. But one way or another, it's gonna be fun, at least for me. Hope you enjoy. kitchen you can see why I wanted to use this place instead of my own little shoe box of a kitchen in my apartment uh, much nicer again we're going through the soprano family cookbook and I don't feel like being sued by David Chase the producer of the Sopranos or by Michelle Sicolon cannot pronounce that name uh, so I'm gonna be kind of vague with the actual ingredients amount ingredient amounts um, in the description is a link to how you can order your own copy of the book on Amazon so that David Chase doesn't sue me um, buy your own copy but the thing about recipes and something I did learn from my always cooking dad is recipes really just a suggestion have fun with it I mean baking baking is a science you have to get that exact but as far as like the filling goes and everything else we're just gonna play it by ear anyways. So for the actual baking part, get your food processor out. I mean, if you wanna do this by hand, that's on you. I don't feel like doing that. Um, X number cups of, and it, it's really specific here, unbleached all-purpose flour. It was specific on the unbleached part. That's very important. Ah, yes. Um, now, I th think I might have already mentioned this, and if I hadn't, I did not go to Culinary Institute of America like my director did, but, uh, you know, I've been a line cook a few times, I've been a waiter, so I've, I'm not unfamiliar with the kitchen, 
I've just never done this really professionally. So I'm not trying to be Alton Brown. I would love to have his budget. I might be as goofy as him. But um, if anything, this is probably going to be more like John Favreau on The Chef Show. I'm really just doing these recipes for the first time myself. And if you end up learning something from it, that's great. Okay, so that was the unbleached flour. And then we add in the salt and raise it. Go slow on this. I did a practice round, got carried away, wasn't paying attention, flipped it open, flour everywhere, flour bomb. It was bad news. Okay, so I'm gonna start it off at just kind of like the low setting. And this is where we add shortening or lard and butter. If you're a healthy person, like my mom, this recipe is really not for you. This is definitely a diabetes clog, artery clogger, but it tastes delicious. So, okay, adding shortening, the butter's being stubborn. We'll deal with those later. Now the book describes, let that go until it starts getting crumbly. Now, now, once it's going, we also add in honey. And this is my shameless corporate promotion, although not corporate at all. Uh, I get my honey from a place in Templeton. If you're from the Central Coast, uh, Templeton is North County Slow, Nature's Touch Nursery. Uh, Melanie, my girl there, she hooked me up with this honey been using it for a couple months for my allergies and it is amazing now the, this one I will tell you the recipe does say one teaspoon I however I'm gonna get my my Winnie the Pooh on I love me some honey and I'm not gonna keep to that plus it sticks so get it, get in, get in close on this cake oh honey is amazing Have you tried this honey, by the way, as an aside? Okay. Nope. All right, you're gonna have to hold the camera steady while you do this. Oh, yeah. Mm. I doubt that was steady. All right, so now it's like kind of crumbly, right? We're gonna take the water, add about half of it right away, get the moisture in, and then the book says spoonfuls, I'm just gonna, just kinda do little tosses here and there. And then you'll see the dough is actually starting to foam up, form the way you think the dough normally forms. And just kinda pick and choose. This place needs more moisture, this place needs more moisture. That's good enough. I'm just gonna add the rest. All right. So it's been going for a little while now. It's about the way it should be. Um, I left some extra flour here. Now, if you have a super awesome marble granite type counter, like my parents do, you can do this. As long as it's clean, please make sure you clean it. Oh, man, I love all these tools that they have here. That was a whole big old lot of shortening mess. <laughs> Didn't make it. Somebody moved my towel. Can you believe that? It's all right. We got spares using this towel now. All right. So we take all the dough out of here. in the sink, cluster it all up. I got some of the flour on the counter and they say to just knead it for about a minute or so. Now while I'm doing this to burn up and occupy this minute of time so it's not dead air, when my director was fresh out of the Culinary Institute, yep. She came over one time and I was like, let's make pasta from scratch. And she was like, oh, 
watch me batali this. So she takes all this flour and she makes a nice big old volcano with the crater and everything. Did you just stop the film? No, can you just <laughs> side note that I didn't actually finish culinary school. Well, that's, I mean, yeah, but. Culinary school dropout. Well, <laughs> she uh, decides she's gonna batali this and I'm just standing in awe and amazement as she does all the eggs and everything. Unfortunately, yep. like the engineers in New Orleans, dam broke, the, the levee failed, and egg starts pouring out everywhere here. Yep. And I'm like, oh man, we've got to clean this. My parents are gonna kill me. Cause we were both still in like junior college at the time. So it was a hilarious, hilarious moment that I like bringing up every once in a while to embarrass her. All right, so we got my little dough frisbee. Got saran wrap. That I can't seem to grasp for some reason. As another aside, Kate, who's been assisting me, hates the hates those videos on the internet that make cooking look so simple. And one of her big pet peeves about Food Network is, ah, they're all so perfect. Cooking's not like that. So I said, don't worry, Kate. I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to show all the flaws. Here I am, showing all the flaws. Yep, here so we are. This goes into the fridge for at least an hour, maybe more. I was going to do one of those cool Alton Brown kind of shots where the camera's in the fridge, but apparently my parents had a party and this thing is way loaded, so that camera is not fitting in here. <laughs> okay, so dough is in the fridge now. I don't know where we left off on filming. She's been just been hitting record and not record and not telling me, but it's cool, whatever, we're having fun. That's all being in the kitchen should be, is fun. So there's uh, two main parts to this, the actual dough itself and then the filling. The dough is doing the resting, let's move on to the filling. Food processor, it's time for you to scooch on over here next to the Google. Um, okay, filling. Medium-sized saucepan, all right? And then for this, we're gonna have sugar. Remember, this is diabetes causer of a recipe. And it gives you the option of either cream of wheat or semolina, which, you know, in proper Italian style, I'm doing that with my hands. Uh, my celebrity crust, Giada de Laurentiis, would totally hate how I'm pronouncing all this stuff, but you know, Giada's not here right now, is she? I just have her do all this. Okay, and it also calls for uh, candied orange peel, which I'm gonna be honest, I stopped trying to find it, stopped trying to look for it, and my mom was like, ah, I can make candied orange peel, and I'm like, please, do it. The recipe says one egg, I'm gonna be using two because I am just extra like that. Actually, I'm making a double batch, so we're gonna come back to that in a second. Uh, and then orange zest, which if you have, aha, uh -huh, I picked the right door on the first try. If you have one of these super awesome little, uh, great microplane, that's the, I know they're graders. I was trying to remember the technical term for it. Microplane, these things are awesome. So, because I'm bumming everything off my parents, I went to their orange tree and picked this thing on, picked this guy. So, yeah, they have everything. I can't wait till I can retire. Please like and subscribe so that, you know, I can be YouTube famous and afford my own kitchen like this someday, maybe, hopefully. That's, all right. So that's a good amount of zest, in my opinion, because I'm tired of doing it. You go back in your home orange. Okay. So we're going to, in the medium saucepan, I also forgot the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that water right now. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way now. So it's ready to go. Let me get that other guy out of there. That would have been awkward. Whole different egg game. All right. 
constantly be washing your hands because you know, Corona, it's still out there, out to get you. Like I said, I'm doing this in a double batch. So, first thing, sugar and the semolina or the cream of wheat. I'm gonna be honest, I am using cream of wheat because when I read this recipe, I was like, God, I do not remember the last time I had cream of wheat. I kind of want to have a box laying around, so I want to turn a week just like have that. Um, technical difficulties. Why won't you like for me? Ah. All right. Now we're cooking with fire. Okay. Got that on there. Got my water. And we're gonna cook this medium heat for two-ish minutes or until it starts to like really get thick and you're like, oh man, this is something that could go inside of a pastry. It's gotta taste good. It's gotta taste good. Okay, so had just a little bit of a break, a water break, while this kept, had to continually stir it. I uh, turned the heat off. Uh, it's nice and thick. That, stereotypical cream of wheat kind of feel and you know it's bonding to itself now the next step is going to be adding in um, the egg the ricotta the vanilla in case you're like wait a minute he didn't list vanilla before you're right I remembered while we were on break <laughs> and the zest um, oh and the cinnamon same thing with vanilla totally forgot all right, the thing is, this is still really warm and we're gonna be adding egg to it. So you let it cool. I may not be a professional cook, but the amount of time that I did spend in a professional kitchen, I learned that much at least. Do not put cold eggs into something warm immediately because then it's gonna cook and you're gonna have the weirdest tasting scrambled eggs you've ever eaten in your life. And uh, if you're brave enough to go for a try, I'm not gonna stop you. Write in the comments how that turned out for you because I'm curious to know. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have another water break and uh, you want some wine, Kate? <laughs> sure. All right, we're gonna probably have some wine while this cools down a little bit. Okay, so I have a bowl out here. Um, it's cooled down some, but as my technical director, Kate, uh, has mentioned it's really the pot that's keeping it warm and I want to get this going so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer all the cream of wheat aka semolina if you're using that into this bowl right here to help with the cooling effect and if you want to just go ahead and do this and then toss the whole thing into the fridge actually that would have been a smart idea for us to do huh well, hey, okay. you know what? It's too late for me, but you go at home. You can try that if you want. Let me know how it turns out. That's just an idea. I'm spitballing. Okay. So the pan's done. I'm going to actually go ahead and start with the ricotta because this has been in the fridge. It will bring down the temperature even more so that hopefully we don't end up with super sweet scrambled eggs. By the way, I'm filming this in August on the Central Coast of California, and it's about four billion degrees in here. Shit. <laughs> I don't know how much of that last part you were able to hear because we had the AC going, just blasting. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't feel like redoing it. I'm still super low budget, this is my first video. So if you wanna sponsor me, I can give you my Venmo and you can give me some audio equipment. That would be great, because I plan to keep doing this whether the sound sucks or not. But anyways, back to Ricot. So Ricot and Semolina. Come on Gianna, give me some credit points for trying on pronunciation. We're gonna mix this all in together. All right, so in an attempt to cool it down even more, I'm gonna go with the vanilla first. 
totally mixing up the order. Oh, and that smell though. Mm. Okay, zest. Gonna need a spoon because zest is totally sticking. By the way, side note, if you want a pan, I, during our break, aside from getting wine, I also took care of some of the dishes. Pro tip, this is a pro tip that I can actually give. Clean as you go. It makes life so much easier. My first class in the kitchen in the Navy would be so happy that I said that right now because he said it nonstop when I was working in the kitchen on the, the galley of the ship. <laughs> My bad. Should use proper nautical terms. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna give these eggs a go. I am like a good 98% sure that I'm not about to create super sweet scrambled eggs. So here we go. So at this point, once you add the egg, you're like, is it supposed to look like that? Trust me, just roll with it. Just keep stirring it a bit more. All right. Just stir into it. Do the, I like to do these like flappy folds. That's my own style. Everyone's got their own style. All right, time to bring up flavor a bit more. I'm not trying to rip off Emerald. I'm not gonna say boom or bam or whatever it is that he said. What did he say? I already forgot. Bam. Bam. It was bam. I was right. Bam. Okay. Now, cinnamon's in here. Pretty much everything but the candied orange. So let's go with that now. I hope you know a good local market to buy it from because I am still hunting a place on the Central Coast. If you're watching this, you're on the Central Coast and you know a place for me to buy a candied orange, comment below. Let me know, please. Or send me a message. Hit me up on Instagram at official Anthony Belton or my Twitter, real Tony B. There's my shameless promo. And oh, right, it smells so good. Here you go, Kate. Okay, try to stabilize it. And there goes some of my feeling. Not caught on camera. Okay. Right. Okay. So now this is done. And some of you're like all afraid about the whole sem salmonella thing. I'm not. Look at me. I'm a tank. I've survived so much stuff. I've eaten so much street food in third world countries. Salmonella's not going to get me. Don't try this at home, kid. But if any of you are concerned about that step and you're like, I don't want to be eating raw egg, later on there's going to be a baking portion. So the egg does end up cooking. Don't fear. If you don't want to try it at this point, I get it. Everyone's got their fear. But this isn't one of mine. So, all right. About that dough, I kind of did the Food Network thing and I did a prep dough ahead of time. That's why I'm also doing a double batch of this because I'm gonna end up with two sets of dough. Uh, we're gonna go on to that part now. Okay, so how did I wrap this? I wrapped this on this side. We're gonna open this bad boy up. And now the book says divide this up into four pieces. I tried that and four was just a bit much. So then I went ahead uh, and divided it up into eight pieces and that was a lot better for me. Yes, I did do a practice round because I've never done this recipe before. I swear there were other recipes I do will be a lot more authentic on me trying it for the first time, but if it makes you feel any better, I'm not entirely lying. This is really only the second time I've ever made this. So I'm gonna go ahead Divide the dough up, eight parts, pizza style. Obviously, I'm a man who knows how to cut a pizza. And this is gonna be time-lapse because this process takes forever. You will notice I'm using an old school hand crank pasta maker. If uh, you go on, clearly you're watching this on YouTube. 
if you YouTube other recipes on how to make Schwoyevel, uh, pizza, or not pizza, uh, Cake Boss, that guy, that guy has a video on how to do this. And he's making like this industrial size, like, it's a cute video because he's got his kid with him, but it's like, his video is designed for if you own a bakery, not so much mom and pop, just, hey, let's try this one weird recipe. Watch it for the fun, but he tried to use shortening on his slab, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna imitate Cake Boss. Worked terrible for me. So this is where the bowl of spare extra flour comes in handy. So Kate doesn't know this, but she's gonna help me with the hand crank on the uh, pasta maker. We're gonna time lapse this just cause it's gonna take a while. All eight pieces, it's not pretty. Also, now would be a good time to go ahead and start preheating your oven. It should be preheated to 400 degrees, which means even though it's already 400 degrees in this kitchen because it's August I'm in California, it's probably gonna end up being like 800 degrees. So wish us luck. We should probably hydrate. <laughs> All right, so anyways, we got the dough and we put it through the pasta machine, hand cranked with love, all right? And again, I'm not afraid of uh, salmonella. The dough is pretty much on point as where it should be. I'm gonna throw this away. Okay, so remember I mentioned at the start of this, this is not for the health conscious. This is not for those fearing diabetes. The rest of that shortening that you have left over, now is where it's gonna come into play. So, we're gonna take it, little tiny small saucepan, shortening, and of course, Paula Dean's favorite dessert. Is that it? And I'm gonna bring the heat down on that, because it's already a bajillion degrees in here. Kate says my hair looks fine, I'm gonna trust her, but I am sweating all kinds. Uh, I'm melting like this butter in here is. Uh, so what we're gonna need that for is, we're gonna roll all of this together. Um, the book says to stack the different sheets on top of each other and roll it that way. If you look at other YouTube videos, as if you were cheating on me. And you try to find another recipe on how to do this. A lot of them are going to say, you start with one, roll, and you just continue rolling into the next one. I wanted to try that, and then I got to this point and I was exhausted on my rehearsal version of it's telling me that it's preheated. I thought it already was. See, Kate, we did not miss the beep. Okay, that's good to know. That is good to know. So, okay, oven is now preheated officially. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the stack method, okay? Okay, so I'm widening these out now and I'm also gonna widen, widen them out as I go along. Now some of you, some of my viewers in California and Colorado, you were born for this. This is your moment to shine. But uh, contrary to popular belief, I wasn't one of those kids in high school. So I have to fall back on my Boy Scout tent rolling experience like a good boy that I am. Okay, find you a handy dandy little butter brush. Kate's laughing and looking at something on her phone, so I don't know what's coming up next on that her end. Just grocery shopping. <laughs> oh, did I remind you to buy one? Great. See, I've already helped one person out. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and stack this one on top. And you know what? 
I'm going to go ahead and find an appropriate size knife. God, my dad has so many knives to choose from. This is excess. This is excess. I don't usually like to waste food, but okay. Now I've greased it up, put a strip down. Time to do the same to the new guy. Welcome to the party, new strip. And yeah, be uh, be copious with this stuff. Butter's cheap. Alright, and actually, I'm going to try to center this, which I should have just chosen the center one to begin with. That would have been the logical, smart thing to do, but nah, not for me, too easy. Got to make things hard and complicated for myself. True rookie move. True rookie move. That's right. Get that, get that butter all up in there. like your paint houses. Ha, <laughs> mafia reference. All right, so that process is done. Time to hydrate. Mm. Man, that is good. All right, so I'm gonna try to get a little, squeeze a little bit more width out of this. So the rolling pin comes back again. This, process is also helping all the layers stick closer together so there we go getting it nice and wide you might think this is a lot of work but when you bite into it at the end of it all you're gonna realize it's worth shooting somebody in the foot over Soprano reference, wait till episode play three. Okay, and now is the time we begin our rolling. Kate, you should have already begun our rolling, but I'm talking about the rolling for the pastry. What's the active? Uh, um, ABR, always be rolling. Yeah, always be rolling, that's right. You never know when the camera's gonna strike gold. <laughs> okay. So it's gonna kinda like be reminiscent of a Yule log in a way. Uh, true Italians probably be questioning my technique. True Italians would be questioning a lot of me right now. Like he's no bison. I'm sorry I don't know what part of the boot my family's from, okay? Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stretch it out just a little bit. Now in theory, you should be able to get like, I think it was 12 cuts out of this, about um, a half inch thick. I'm just gonna do some more rolling to. All right. So. How is this gonna end up looking like a lobster tail when I'm done? Full, full disclosure, my practice round, they didn't look like lobster tails, they looked like clams, but they were happy clams. Uh, the part at the end here looks like a rose. Actually, that does kind of look like a dough rose. Okay. That's useless to you. I mean, if you wanna cook it just for the fun of it, fine. But no little dough roses for us. So you can see the spiral action going here. My finger is about a half inch thick, so kids, don't try this at home. Get your, keep your finger out of there from the knife, okay? Make sure your knife is nice and sharp and you should end up with something looking like that. And we're gonna try this as many times as I can get out of this roll. I'm gonna keep things easy. I'm going to use parchment paper. I figure I have enough oil and grease going on inside the actual dish itself. So I'm probably not going to do all 14 on this one. 
I got my secondary back here. But, all right, now here's where, I wouldn't say things went wrong for me last time, but if you're trying to get that true lobster tail shape, this is the part that matters. Me, uh, if I get the lobster tail shape, that would be awesome. But if I end up with happy little clams like I did last time, hey, they still tasted delicious, so I don't care. I have this like ginormous man-sized palm. If you don't, you can use the little tiny method. Uh, also on YouTube, there was this one little Italian lady. She cranked these out like she was born and made to do it. Maybe watch the way she does it. But for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this like fatty portion of palm where thumb meets the rest of the hand and kind of like squish it out a little. This is also totally why mine ended up looking like clams. But basically you wanna kinda have a cone-like shape to it. Depending on how much grease and butter you use, the flakes might start coming apart a little bit. And hey, like Bob Ross would say, that's okay, happy little accident. I hope the state doesn't sue me. Okay, I'm gonna try to get a little bit more size out of this thing. Oh, there's the opening. It's all right, it's gonna be cool. I'll just put that part on the bottom, it'll bake shut. Okay, and you take the good size scoopage. And you don't like have to like seal it, seal it, but kind of clamp it down. That one's definitely gonna turn out looking like a clam, I can already tell. And repeat process over and over again until you don't have any left. Should I take Probably at a time, maybe with a fresh one. Okay, so went ahead and rolled all of those, and I gotta confess, they all look like clams. I couldn't get a single one of them in proper lobster tail form, so I'm just gonna have clams. In fact, if you're a fan of Family Guy, this one looks like a drunken clam over here because it's actually, I put too much ricotta in it, so it's like, it's, it's spilling its guts out everywhere. Okay, so we take some more of this butter, Paula Deen fashion and baptize them in the name of the cholesterol, the diabetes, and just heart disease in general. The holy trinity of flavor. And uh, don't be so quick to throw this uh, mess of butter out because even though I'm going to put them in for to the oven for about a half hour ish, maybe a little bit more until gold, or until golden brown. We're going to take them out eh, maybe every 10 minutes or so and give another coating. So keep butter on standby. For now, set up the kitchen timer because I'm gonna forget. Here's where if I had Alton Brown money, I would have given you that close up shot of the for you though, heading into the oven. But as we discussed, I don't have Alton Brown money. So you're just gonna have to deal with that shot instead. So like I said, 10 minutes on the clock and we're gonna check back in on them in a bit. Okay, at long last, 30 to 45 minutes has elapsed. 35 to 40 minutes is what I'm gonna say. And we pull them out, watch that first heat wave. Nice and brown, kind of along the same shade. 
these not as much, but okay. And I just let them cool down a little until I stop hearing the inside sizzle. All right, here we are, the grand finale. They're out of the oven. They're still really warm, which is how they are best served. I'm going to plate them, you know, like if I was on chop or something. And actually, I'm going to plate all of them. I'm going to leave some sugarless for my dad. down on the term a few minutes ago. And let it snow, let it snow, let it snow on top of them. So here they are, the finished product. Shvoyadel, AKA lobster tail. But I think we can all agree a lot of these turned out a lot more clamshell like for me. This one, I guess, is pretty close. Take a look. You see kind of where it gets its name. It's supposed to have the little layers just like a lobster's tail. And now, the last bit, trying them out. orange is amazing in here. It's totally missing out the fresh time. So there you go. Serve warm. Show you though. And got done.